Hello, I'm abx 2 cat and welcome back to another second channel video. Today I want to do a video to kind of talk about one of the big deals that just happened here in the UK yesterday that's kind of made big world news. And if you don't know what that is, we had a vote yesterday on where we should remain a member of the EU or where we should leave it. And despite most predictions, we did end up voting to leave, which means we're kind of in this big uncharted territory. So I wanted to explain why this is a big deal, both in terms of the UK, both in terms of the EU, and then kind of help you understand why this is such a big news event. Because even in American media, I've seen this as a really big story. And again, I want to explain why that is with today video. So hopefully you all do enjoy this. If you do, that's great. It's the second channel. I don't care. So yeah, I just want to quickly clarify. I want to talk about this for a while now, but besides that first Brexit video, where I had to be really careful to avoid points. I do want to mention in this one that, yeah, the thing about Brexit is, is I didn't want to talk about it without, you know, but we aren't going to on the sides. Now we know that leave has one and we know we are leaving. We can kind of talk about that possibility rather than talking about the other one too, which makes things a lot, lot easier. So let's just first uh, start talking about by the result because the result was incredibly close. Like I mentioned, most predictions said it would be a remain narrow victory, but it ended up being a leave narrow victory, which, again, was uh, contrary to what most people predicted, uh, but because it was a leave uh, uh, victory by like 51.9% to 48.1%, uh, it means we're a very, very divided country right now, because uh, because they do the counting by area, it means a lot of places voted heavily to stay, a lot of places voted heavily to leave, and the map of the two is just a big mess of like, oh god, and also consider the fact that the UK is made up of four countries, and then there's Gibraltar, which voted to, uh, Gibraltar, which is on Spain, uh, voted to stay very, very heavily, uh, Scotland voted to stay very, very heavily in, and also um, Northern Ireland voted to stay in, whereas Wales and England voted to stay out. So again, we've got this kind of divide in the UK just in the results alone, but we'll get more into that later. Let's just start by explaining how this referendum happened and why this ever did become an issue for the people, because basically, um, you know, the, the Conservative Party, our right wing in the UK, um, basically have always had this big split over Europe, over where it's a good thing or where it's not. You've got the wing of the party that are more like, I guess, I, I don't want to say it without, like, so, like I, you know, economic practicalists or something, who are like, yeah, we'll stay in the EU, it's fine. And then you've got the Eurosceptic wing that are like, yeah, we don't really like the EU. And basically that split has always kept the uh, party from giving power until David Cameron got in as kind of like a, yeah, I hate the EU and we'll fix it and then we'll vote and we'll get out. But kind of just drawing the line of staying in, but saying he's going to go out and doing that kind of keep a juggling act going. However, uh, at the 2015 election where he wasn't expecting to win, he put in his manifesto that he would hold an election by 2017 if he got a majority conservative government. And the reason that's a big deal is because, again, no one was expecting majority conservative conservative government. So it was kind of like a false promise, but it meant that people still vote for him, trying to get that to happen. Again, contrary to everyone's popular belief, the conservatives weren't even expected to be the largest party. They ended up winning the entire thing with an outright majority, and therefore they had to uh, have the referendum by 2017. Uh, David Cameron's strategy was to go uh, you know, go in, get the negotiation at the end of last year, or the start of this year, then hold the referendum as soon as possible. And that meant that just a year after that last election, we have an election on where we should leave or join, oh sorry, <laughs> stay or leave in the EU. And again, most people People predicted it to go to remain because at the time, you know, before any of the uh, campaigning went on, it was something like uh, 65, 35 as far as people want to remain or people want to stay. Uh, yeah, people want to remain or people want to leave. Again, the, the term's confused now. But so that's what kind of happened. And the thing that kind of happened since then is both campaigns went into this free for all of like, no one's telling any truth. It's just a whole big mess. And you can debate that if you believe in any side. But regardless of which side you're on, you can you can say the other side at least uh, had nothing but like lies to say. So on the remain side, they said, if we vote to leave the EU, every household will be £4,000 uh, worse off. Um, we're going to have to raise like, uh, I don't know, about £30 billion in tax rises. We're going to have this big punishment budget the, uh, the moment it comes out. They made all these big statements. Your house prices are going to go down like 20%. Uh, the pound's going to fall, which actually did happen, funny enough. But still, they made these big scare statements that realistically were just like, oh, we go worst case scenario, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. Three million jobs are going to leave, all that sort of stuff. Whereas the Leave side, they came up with a bunch of garbage too. It was, um, we say fringe and 50 million pounds a week by not being in the EU. That's wrong. They just give us back 20% of that without even going in more. Then they give us back another 40% and therefore it's not the same thing at all. Uh, there was also the, uh, the whole thing of like, um, as well as, uh, you know, the money thing. They said, oh, Turkey's joining next year and 80 million people can move to the UK. Again, that's ridiculous hyperbole and not even true. There's all these uh, statements both campaigns made and it kind of went into this big issue of, the, you know, it became a referendum on immigration because the thing the thing people do know about the EU is do you trust the idea of an ever closer union or, uh, you know, where, where everyone can move from one place to another or do you want to kind of bar off the country? And because there is a rising anti immigrant sentiment, a rising anti-establishment sentiment, these two kind of factions came together and it seems like they won. Again, you can kind of analyze that result, however, 
however you want. But if you look at the maps and you look at the way that went, that's basically what happened. People don't like the establishment. People don't like immigration um, in a lot of areas of the country anyway. And that's what kind of led to this referendum going for leave. And therefore, we're leaving the uh, the EU. So why is that a big deal? Why, why is it a big deal to just put out this big 28-member group? So the reason that's a big deal is because no one's ever done it before. It was um the only time it's ever happened is Greenland and they're a territory in another country. The United Kingdom is the second, no, the third biggest country in the EU. We, me- we make up something like 17% of their entire economy. We make up like 20% of their budget. This is a big port. It's, it's like, uh, it's the equivalent of like Texas and California, both leaving the United States at the same time, which they can't do. But, you know, it's, it's like... um. I uh, know, like, it's like it's like Hong Kong leaving. Uh, no, it's not quite that big, but <laughs> uh, sorry, not, not not quite that small. It's like you know, try and think of a big country losing a significant part. It's like uh, the United Kingdom losing London, for instance. It's uh, it's something on that scale, and Europe now has to deal with this giant hole that's coming, and the UK has to negotiate a deal with Europe in the next two years, or it's two years and like four months because they're not doing it yet. And again, this is a really really big deal because Europe wants to give us a bad. Okay, okay this this really really simplified version here is Europe wants to give a bad deal because lots of countries have a Eurosceptic movement like the UK's. The UK is the first time this ever went to power, then had a referendum, then won the referendum, and now we're coming out. And it means all across Europe, the exact same parties, which all, all existed, they're now realizing this is their opportunity, and it's all rising. The, the anti-EU sentiment is like at an all-time high, because a country has just voted to leave, and they don't be leaving, which means the EU needs to send as strong a message as possible that when you leave, it's a bad thing. So the, the, the UK has two years to try and negotiate the best deal possible. The EU has the two years to negotiate the you know a deal which is punishing to some extent without actually punishing themselves and then the rest of the world also has to make a deal with the UK because the UK currently as a member of the EU doesn't negotiate its own trade agreements it has to negotiate through the EU it now has to renegotiate all of those deals so yeah um this is scary times it could be good times it could be bad times but um the it, it's basically um everything's up in the air we don't know what's happening and that's why it's a big deal markets don't like uncertainty and when you have the uncertainty of we don't know what deal we're negotiating like even the key figures who are going to be in charge haven't actually said what deal we're negotiating they've they've said roughly like norway model uh, so stuff like that. Um, the, the other big reason this is a big deal is because half of the, like like I said, two of the countries in the UK voted to remain and two voted to leave. That's going to make the whole Scotland independence argument come up again. And the other reason it's a big deal is um, the, the fact that the UK currently, uh, so, you know, it, once you leave the EU and you want to rejoin, it's going to be a really uh, tricky thing. That's That might happen at some point in the future, because the EU, to some extent, is becoming a larger and larger group. It could just dissolve, and it could be a non-issue, but what might happen instead is the EU might become, uh, you know, bigger and bigger, and we might want to rejoin at some point, and that's where the real tricky bit comes, because although the UK could be better outside the EU, if we do ever want to rejoin again, we will lose all of our favourable deals. We'd have to accept the Euro, we'd have to accept Schengen, and really, this vote to leave the EU is almost like a permanent back out. So yeah, why is the UK leaving the EU such a big deal? One, it's caused a massive split in the country itself because it was such a close result. Two, we've got to negotiate a deal where both parties aren't really too fond of each other. Um, again, the, 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 the EU's been not too fond of the UK for a while now and now we've just uh, we voted to leave and almost almost hit the, you know, the, the domino switch to perhaps destroy the entire thing. Three, um, markets are going crazy because uncertainty over both those points. And then uh, four, it's kind of like a leaving forever thing. Like the the odds of rejoining are very, very, very low. And as soon as they, as soon as um, whoever does hit the button, because you have to you have to register some notification. It's called like Article Fifty of the Lisbon Treaty, I think it is. Whoever's next in charge, because they are going to do a whole thing, that's going to be a big deal. Also, in the meantime, the pound drops from like 15% overnight, the lowest level in uh, almost since uh, currency records began. And it means that, yeah, lots of scary stuff is happening. Uh, house prices are going to start to fall. I, I've just bought a house, by the way, so I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, stock markets all around the world. Japan's stock market starts to drop. And yeah, this is a big event of uncertainty in the world. It's a big event of this has never happened before, and um, this is uncharted territory. So that's why the UK leaving the EU is a big deal. Even if you're not in the UK or the EU, um, it's it's scary times. It might be good. It might be bad. And that's something we get to find out now that we've voted to leave. And um, in case... <laughs> um, no, you know, I was going to say, in case someone was curious how I voted, it's one of those things that's like, eh. I I feel like when you say something like that, you, you're kind of lending weight to it, and you you give people an avenue to attack you. But I did vote, so I democracied. Are you proud of me? I think you are. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.